Hello. In this short video, I'd like to show you how anyone with an existing building can improve their energy efficiency to cut running costs and comply with building regulations. Buildings consume huge amounts of energy and legislation is now focusing attention on energy use in the built environment as never before. Laws such as ESOS or the Energy Savings Opportunity Scheme mean that many buildings will soon have to undergo a regular energy assessment and display an energy label. This will mean that from 2017, landlords with buildings that can't get beyond an F grade will no longer be allowed to let them. So there are big changes coming in which it's no longer possible to ignore. But before you worry about where to start, I wanted to show you what we've been doing with our own headquarters to highlight how straightforward the process can be, as long as you plan things accordingly. We're here in our UK headquarters in Hatfield, just north of London. It's a typical 1980s building with a steel frame, glass fronted construction. When we moved in in 1989, like many other buildings of the period, it had a chiller and gas boiler combination to provide cooling and heating to the offices. These were probably considered very efficient in their day, but when we looked at the building to see how we could improve energy efficiency, we estimate that it would have received an E energy rating. Over the past eight years or so, we've planned a series of improvements to the building, which means it's now achieved a B energy rating. Of course, this meant replacing building services equipment, and of course, this meant upfront costs before any savings in running costs could be recouped. And just like any other company, we've had to make a strong business case for every capital investment. We started by looking at the cooling system, and when the old chiller was coming to the end of its useful working life, we made a case for replacing it with a VRF air conditioning system. This meant that we were able to cool and heat different parts of the building at the same time so heat rejected from cooling areas such as the server room could be reused in other parts of the building. When the gas boiler needed replacing, we made the case for removing gas completely off the site and added a heat pump boiler to the air conditioning so that we can use rejected heat energy to supply the hot water for the kitchens. We added a heat pump air curtain over the front door to make sure that wastage was kept to a minimum. And wherever possible, we added Losnay heat recovery ventilation to maximise fresh air in one of the most energy efficient ways possible. We also introduced photovoltaic panels across the large roof space so that we can generate huge amounts of electricity to supplement our own use and sell excess onto the grid. We've now replaced the old air handling unit with our new Kanzen range, which use heat pumps to provide energy efficient heating and cooling. And we've introduced the Ikadan water heating system for all of the toilets and showers in the building. And with the introduction of our own new chiller range, we are looking at how we can use this to increase energy efficiency further. Of course, all of these individual systems really can help in reducing energy use, but we also need to make sure that they are controlled properly so that we can get the heating and cooling systems working together rather than competing with each other. We've also looked at other energy consuming areas such as the lifts and upgraded them to modern ones, the hand dryers in the toilets and even the lighting all with the aim of conserving energy and reducing running costs. All of these improvements had to be paid for and all of this expense had to be justified. Which is why we plan to do this over an extended period and looked at improvements only when equipment needed replacing or a strong business case could be made for the investment. And this is something that any business can and should be looking at now. We know that there is more that we can do, but the next big phase will involve improving the fabric of the building and this is not something we can contemplate at this point in a working office. But we also know that we have helped future-proof the building against existing and new legislation. And we also know that we're using far less energy and paying far less for it than if we'd simply carried on as we were. 